Hi everybody, welcome back. We are starting a new video series here looking at non-linearities in, um, well, in linear regression. Um, and so there are a couple things that, uh, that are going to go into this. Let me provide a little bit of an outline. So first, I'm going to just refresh ourselves on some of the nuanced details of what we mean when we say simple linear regression. Then uh, we're going to look at what happens if we change the measurement units in a regression. So if if a, if a variable is measured in dollars versus thousands of dollars, how is that going to affect the outcome? And then after that, we'll, we'll talk about nonlinear functional forms. Um, and so it's, it's still going to be linear regression, but we'll have nonlinear functional forms. And, and I'll talk about what that means. Okay, but let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, a, a few videos will be made out of this, uh, but let's go ahead and dive into uh, what it exactly means when we're saying simple simple linear regression. All right, so there are two words here. They're simple. And what that is basically means is that we have one independent variable. One independent variable. As opposed to um, multiple regression is multiple independent variables with an S. Um, and so there are some special things about multiple regression. We've talked about some of them and we'll talk about more of them in, in some, some more detail later on. But simple means one independent variable and the, the more important part for this, this set of videos is the linear part. Linear regression means that it's linear in the parameters. Basically, in the betas. So, if we write down a regression equation here, y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus the error term epsilon, <clears throat> it's simple because there's only one independent variable x. Um, but then it's linear in the parameters because we have beta 0 plus, or it could be a minus, um, plus beta 1 times x1. And if it's, you know, multiple linear regression or multivariate regression, we could have plus beta 2, x2, so on and so forth. Uh, but that's just the additive beta parameters is what make it linear. Now, I want to show you a couple more examples of linear regressions, simple linear regressions. So we're going to come back to just one x variable. We could have something like y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times 1000x. All right, let's do it like this. 1000x plus epsilon. Um, so here we're changing the units, and we'll talk about we'll talk about what that means. Uh, we could also have y is equal to beta zero plus beta one x squared plus epsilon. X squared is not a linear function; that's a quadratic function, but we're still linear in the beta parameters. A couple more examples of that: we could have y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times the log of x plus the error term. Not a linear function, but it's linear in the parameter. 
And then <clears throat> finally, we could have even something like log of y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x or beta 1 log of x. That's also fine. Um, and we'll actually talk about that um, plus epsilon. All of these are linear regression, but some of them just happen to have nonlinear functional forms. Um, and that's okay. So um, all of the benefits that we have of linear regression, we still have as long as we're linear in those parameters. It, just a, a quick example of something that wouldn't be linear in parameters, you could have beta 0 times beta 1x plus epsilon. That is not linear in parameters. You could have y is equal to beta 0 plus x raised to the power of beta 1 plus epsilon. That is not linear. Um, so ultimately, uh, as long as we're linear in the parameters, uh, we're going to be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one and then we'll look at some of these other ones. Okay, um, but this first one is we're just changing x from x to 1000x or we could change x to 1 one hundredth of an x. We could change it to a percentage or a decimal, right? And so that's what we're going to start with here in the next section, which is... Changing unit measurements. Okay, and to do this, we're going to use a, a an example. So, salary will be equal to, and let's go ahead and do the estimated. So we'll give them hats. So we're not going to have the error term, beta, the estimate for beta 0 plus estimate for beta 1 times return on equity. So how does company performance, return on equity, how is that associated with CEO salary? Um, this is an example out of the Woldridge textbook. And um, I'll be making some Python videos and we'll be using the same examples. So anyway, uh, this is the model where we have estimated. And now let's, let's think about, we're going to look at a couple different examples. So salary, that could be measured in some different ways. Return on equity could also be measured in some different ways. So we're going to look at how, how things are affected if we change the measurements of the y variable. We're also going to look at the x variable. We're going to start with the y. So if we start with the dependent or the outcome variable, then let's use an example. So we have our variable salary, and let's suppose that under one scenario, scenario A, we're going to measure salary in thousands of dollars. And in scenario B, we're just going to measure it in dollars. And so just as an example of just one observation, uh, we could have a number here that's 56. Whereas in scenario B, we would be calling that 56,000. That's just one variable. You know, somebody else here could have 100 and 100,000, right? Uh, it's just, it just, just one variable, one observation. So uh, there actually is a, a data set which uh, actually runs this model. And when it does, we can, we can obtain the following estimates. So when we run that model, we're going to get a beta 0 estimate. And so let's go ahead and carry these lines down. 
I'll move this up a little bit. So the beta zero estimate and the beta one estimate uh, for these. And so just just to conf just to show what's happening here compared to scenario A, scenario B is multiplying this by multiplying scenario A by 1000. Now when you actually estimate that model with the data set from the book, you'll get a beta 0 coefficient of 900 63.191. So that's a decimal point. And you'll get a beta 1 coefficient of 18.501. Okay, and so what that's saying is that uh, a 1 unit increase in return on equity is associated with an 18.5 thousand dollar uh, increase in salary so that's if that's what happens if you run it in thousands if you run the model again what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the following results you'll have 963 comma 191 so 963,000 191 and you're going to get 18,501. And so both of these, uh, the beta 0 and the beta 1, are getting, they're just 1,000 times larger than the outcome in scenario A. Um, and so, actually, if the dependent variable changes, it's a pretty simple transformation. All of the regression coefficients are just going to be um, increased by that same constant. So let's actually just summarize that down here. If the dependent variable is multiplied by a constant, C, If the dependent variable is multiplied by a constant C, in this case C is equal to a thousand, it could be anything. If it's multiplied by C, then the intercept. beta 0 and the slope slope estimates so here it's beta 1 oh these are estimates beta 1 but if we had more beta 2 and so on and so forth beta 3 all of these are also multiplied by C which is what we see in this example here so uh, an increase in the the measurement units by a thousand is associated with regression coefficient increases by the same amount that's if the dependent variable has different units but what if we measure return on equity uh, with different units. So let's look at what happens if we change the independent variable. This is going to be a little bit different. So again, we're going to use uh, the same model. So we have salary I'm just going to abbreviate it this time. Sa same variable though. Salary is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 return on equity. 
But this time, we're going to look at what happens if the x variable has a different outcome. So, for example, let's look at return on equity being measured in different ways. Scenario A, we're going to use return on equity just measured as a straight percentage. And scenario B, we're going to measure it not as a percentage, but as a decimal point. So essentially, if as one observation, we had a return on equity of 23%. In scenario B, it would be measured in the data set as 0 0.23. So essentially, compared to scenario A, scenario B is scenario A divided by 100. Okay, um, and so again, we're going to look at how that would translate into the slope co the intercept and the slope coefficient, beta 1. Um, again, so we run the model as before. It's, it's the same model. So to start, nothing is different. 963.191 and 18.501. That's the same. But in scenario B, we're going to get the same um, intercept. 963.191 but the slope coefficient is now going to turn from 18.5 to 1850.1. And so what's happened here is that only the slope coefficients change and it's the reciproc recip reciprocal of what we did to the data. So the data we divided by 100, the slope coefficient will then be multiplied by that same factor. And so to summarize that in words, <coughs> generally, generally, if the independent variable is divided If the independent variable is divided, and we'll look at this in sort of both cases, or or multiplied by a non-zero constant c. So in this case, that C is 100. Uh, then the OLS slope coefficient so in this case, beta 1 or and also beta 2, beta 3, if we had more um, is multiplied Or if the data is multiplied, then the slope coefficient will be divided <clears throat> by C. Okay, and so in this case, the data is divided by 100, the slope coefficient is multiplied by 100. If we wanted to do multiplying that by 100 or by 1,000, the slope coefficient would be divided by 1,000. So, um, and there's no change. There's no change to the intercept. 
to the beta 0. Okay, so if, if the y outcome variable, if salary is changed, then both the intercept and the slope coefficients will change. But if only the independent variable is changed, then only that independent variable, um, if the units are changed in the independent variable, only the independent variable is going to get that change. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's how it works with uh, the independent independent variables. One last thing that I'll, I'll just briefly mention here is that for either one, the dependent and the independent variable, if, if any of the units are changed on these, regardless, there is going to be no change in R squared, uh, the overall fit of the model. Um, because ultimately, that's, that's just picking up the variation, um, the variation in that can be attributed to all the x variables in the model. If the units change, there's going to be no change to the r squared. All right, so that's, that's how we handle changes in units. Uh, that's going to do it for us in this video. But in the next, <clears throat> we're going to continue on and we're going to look at some of these other examples here where we still have linear regressions, but now we're going to start incorporating some nonlinear functions uh, into the x's. So uh, that's where we're heading in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.